This presentation will provide an overview of current projects using acoustic telemetry to inform fisheries management in Lake Ontario. Many people contributed to the development of this presentation, including the many vessel and technical staff who helped to maintain the ever-expanding network of acoustic receivers and implant transmitters into fish. Since acoustic telemetry first emerged on Lake Ontario a decade ago, 26 different species of fish and one turtle species have been detected on acoustic receivers in Lake Ontario. The number of detections is now in the tens of millions, providing a novel perspective on the behavior, movement, distribution, and interactions of species and their environment. There are currently 435 receiver stations in Lake Ontario, including 32 new stations deployed in 2021 to complete the lakewide offshore spatial coverage. In 2022, nearly 200 new receivers will be deployed in the St. Lawrence River and in a high density 180 kilohertz array to be deployed off of Oswego. The former will provide unique insights into fish movement in a large fluvial system, while the latter will inform post-stocking behavior and survival of important stocked species. By now, I expect most people are aware of the basic functioning of acoustic telemetry. But briefly, biologists implant transmitters of various sizes into fish, which broadcast an identity and a timestamp to receivers, which are continuously listening for transmitters within the detection range. This image on the right shows a typical deployment of a receiver suspended a short distance off the lake bottom between an anchor and a subsurface float. Acoustic telemetry is not a replacement, but a complement to existing assessment tools. In tribute to our Paralympic and Olympic athletes, I've organized this talk around five important management disciplines. Stocking, species restoration, quantifying growth and production, decision support to stock management, and habitat. While the Olympic rings are inspirational, the graphic is also intended to convey the high degree of interrelatedness amongst these management disciplines. Virtually any knowledge learned informs more than one management outcome. I'll start by providing some current examples where acoustic telemetry is improving our stocking practices. Various groups from government and academia are improving surgical techniques needed to ensure tagging tagged fish remain healthy and reflect normal behaviors. In this photo, Dmitry Gorsky is implanting a tag into a fingerling lake trout. My team, in participation with our fish culture section, began a study to compare post-release behavior of fishes released during daytime versus at night, as recent evidence suggests predation mortality and behaviors exhibited by daytime stocked fish may result in reduced survival. Some of that evidence will be explored through a recently funded GLFC project to examine compression barotrauma in cultured deepwater fish species. Shown here is a hyperbaric apparatus for fish designed by Owen Gorman of the USGS, which will be used to simulate different release and fish behavior scenarios. Additional work on post-release behavior and predation mortality will be explored through a recently funded Restoration Act project using a 180 kilohertz high residency tags I had mentioned previously. These high frequency receivers and transmitters are designed to mitigate problems of having large numbers of fish in close proximity so that individual <laughs> behaviors and fate, including documenting predation through the use of novel tags can be documented. In terms of outcomes for stocking, Alex Gatch and others recently published a paper estimating mortality rates for stocked lake trout fingerlings ranging from 5.3% in the first week to approximately 26% in the first year. Extended residency of these stocked fish near historic spawning sites may result in competition with wild con specifics. Sarah LaRock recently completed telemetry studies with Atlantic salmon par and smolt that suggested wild Atlantic salmon par had survival several fold higher than hatchery reared fish owing to naivety to the streams they are released to. 
Subsequent work is now investigating hatchery preconditioning prior to release to improve this post-release survival. Similarly, telemetry work with bloater revealed unexpected behaviors of this species, which had been extirpated from Lake Ontario nearly 40 years ago. Natalie Clenard's work provided vital information on behavior, distribution, and sources of mortality, which are being further investigated to optimize restoration potential for this important prey fish seen essential to successful rehabilitation of the offshore piscivorous fish community. Expanding on the application of acoustic telemetry to species restoration, several groups have used acoustic telemetry to understand the movement, including pre and post spawning behavior of lake trout, including the identification of contingents within the population. Acoustic telemetry has and will continue to improve our understanding of American eel recovery potential, including the fascinating work spearheaded by Alistair Mathers and others that documented wild eels migrating from Lake Ontario through the Cabot Strait en route to their spawning grounds in the Sargasso Sea. This work will only be enhanced with the significant expansion of the receiver coverage in the upper St. Lawrence River. A number of projects are improving our understanding of lake sturgeon movements and habitat occupancy in Lake Ontario with several publications nearing release. Understanding the growth and production of fishes is vital to fisheries management and acoustic telemetry is again providing a unique perspective. Graham Raby is leading a GLFC funded project to use accelerometer tags in walleye to improve our understanding of the energetics of this key species. Using depth and temperature logging tags, Sylvia Ivanova has provided an improved understanding of Chinook and Lake Trout bioenergetics in Lake Ontario including under varying scenarios of climate change and shifts in the prey fish community. Last fall, my team in partnership with the Lake Ontario Management Unit implanted Lake Whitefish with temperature sensor acoustic tags and high resolution archival tags to improve our understanding of the effects of shifts in spatial distribution and habitat occupancy on Lake Whitefish production, a species in decline throughout the Great Lakes Basin, but which supports important commercial and subsistence fisheries. Acoustic telemetry has also been instrumental in informing decisions on species stock management. Last year, Sarah Beach provided a great overview of the differences in spatial distribution of the two dominant stocks of Lake Whitefish and Lake Ontario, showing low spatial overlap between the two stocks, especially in the summer. Likewise, telemetry proved a very powerful tool to identify spawning locations and cues related to the timing of spawning activity, useful in informing the ongoing assessment and recovery of Cisco in Lake Ontario. Several projects are contributing to stock management of walleye in Lake Ontario, but I'll leave it to Jessica Goretzky to fill in those details in her talk shortly at 1045. Finally, acoustic telemetry had a vital role in informing managers about the consequences of tournament displacement of basses, as fish are potentially moved long distances from their home range before being released en masse in the proximity of tournament weigh-in stations. Acoustic telemetry also provided novel insights into management of invasive and imperiled species. For example, John Midwood and colleagues are investigating habitat use of rudd, carp, and goldfish in two Lake Ontario embayments, gaining insights into the movement and habitat associations that will improve monitoring and control efforts. Similarly, Jacqueline Hill and colleagues successfully used acoustic telemetry to track movements of tench, one of the Great Lakes' least wanted invasive species in the St. Lawrence River downstream of Montreal and Jacqueline has hopes of expanding that work through a pending GLFC pre-proposal that will provide direct measures of movement rates and environmental cues needed to develop effective control actions to hopefully prevent tench from establishing in the Great Lakes. American eel are a native species whose decline is directly related to the passage around hydroelectric barriers in the St. Lawrence River system. The Eel Passage Research Centre, a consortium of government agencies and industrial hydropower corporations, 
is continuing to use acoustic telemetry to develop guidance systems to facilitate safe passage around these massive barriers to successful migration. Finally, acoustic telemetry is improving our understanding of fish habitat associations in Lake Ontario. For example, Steve Cook and colleagues have investigated behavior of numerous species to the very dynamic temperature and oxygen conditions in Toronto and Hamilton harbours, as efforts continue to rehabilitate these formerly highly degraded industrial sites. 2021 saw four missions of the rayon glider in Lake Ontario. If you look closely at the front of the glider, you may notice two acoustic receivers which have been incorporated into the science bay of these unmanned autonomous underwater submarines that are providing near real-time physical chemical observations of the lake and are now coupling that habitat information with locations of acoustically tagged fish. These red dots represent lake trout tagged by Dmitry Gorsky's group that were detected by the glider off of St. Catharines last fall. Later this year, the glider will serve a mission in eastern Lake Ontario as part of a high residency fish stocking project locating fish that move beyond the detection range of the fixed station receivers. Another exciting project that started last year was a gloss funded project that suspends light, temperature and water level loggers above a series of existing receivers in Lake Ontario that will provide continuous year round records of thermal optical habitat critical to understanding physical, chemical and biological processes such as fish distribution and bioenergetics and cues for their movement. In summary, acoustic telemetry has quickly become a very powerful additional tool that provides a complementary perspective to inform fisheries management in Lake Ontario. Acoustic telemetry is helping to improve fish stocking practices. It is providing critical insights into the behavior and survival of species under rehabilitation and it is improving our understanding of factors that govern fish growth and production. Acoustic telemetry is helping to delineate distribution and movement of species actively managed for fisheries and to develop better control strategies for invasive and imperiled fish species. Finally, acoustic telemetry has proven a powerful tool to relate fish distribution and production to changing habitat conditions. I'll end my talk with a photo of the RV Jack Christie the newest vessel to join the Ontario Ministry of Northern Development, Mine, Natural Resource and Forestry's Great Lakes Fleet, and which will have a key role in servicing offshore acoustic receivers in addition to supporting the ongoing fisheries and limnological research. Thank you.